Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about why Dungeons and Dragons crafted the way Gary Gygax crafted it is the most important game. It's the most why it's so critically important for the future of humanity. All right, so uh, I've been watching a television show called Search Party. Uh, it's in its fifth season. It just uh, started its fifth season, and I'm watching through its fifth season now. It's a brilliant show. It's 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 very interesting. It's about four very hollow, harmed, broken people um, who live in New York, right? And it's non-genre. It's completely, you know, modern contemporary story. It's a modern contemporary, you know, fiction story told in modern New York, right? And um, and it's brilliant. What it its concept essentially is. Here's these four interesting characters, and here's all the craziness that can that can bloom out of today's, all the crazy patterns, things that can happen, specifically attached to fame and celebrity, right, today. And that once you become famous, these are all the numerous, really unusual, shocking paths that your life can go down, right? And very, very interesting show. I'm really enjoying it. Um... So there's this character in the show. Uh, his name is Tunnel Quinn, okay? And um, he is played by the uh, very famous right now. And uh, uh, he's played by Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum is unique and delightful. He's, he's arrived at a, a point in his career where just, you know, everybody loves him. Uh, he could do no wrong. And uh, and he's just, you know, you turn up and you're like, oh, hey, there's Gold, Jeff Goldblum. And just like, and I think the reason why he delights everyone is whatever, wherever he shows up, he just, he lights it on fire, right? Like he just, whatever he's in, he does such an amazing job of delivering this, you know, magnetic, uh, you know, performance that you just can't walk, talk, walk, you know, you just can't look away from, right? And he does that here. So he plays this guy, Tunnel Quinn, and Tunnel Quinn is a proxy for um, Steve Jobs as an eccentric um self-involved uh, tech billionaire, right? Now, I think a lot of people would say, "Oh, well, hey, they're they're actually, you know, talking about Elon Musk here." I don't think t- I don't think Elon Musk is a tech billionaire. Um, I think uh, and I think what he what he what Elon Musk sells is psychology, right? Like I don't think anybody in the world is buying an electric car because it's a better deal or performs well. They buy it because it's a gigantic badge that tells the world, you know, I'm an environmentalist. And I want to help the world. And, and this is a very visual way for me to show everybody that that's my intent, right? So I don't think he's selling tech at all, right? And, and I, think, I think that's going to prove out because one of the things is I don't think the electric car is going to work because the heart of them is these, is these batteries. And the, the batteries need to get cheaper. And absolutely no points of data in my, as, that I've been looking at point to the idea that, uh, that battery, batteries or anything in batteries... Are, are going to get cheaper, right? Like, in fact, the the phone I'm shooting this on, it can't get through a single day. So, like, I have no idea why anybody's going to tell me, you know, they, they, they can't charge my phone for a week, right? But they're going to tell me they're going to make super cheap va- uh, batteries that are going to, you know, allow me to drive to New York without worrying that my car will shut down like a, like, like a flashlight, you know, on door cells. Uh, please, you know, like, so I don't, I, I think he's, he's selling hope and, um, you know, and, um, badges, right? I don't think he's selling tech at all. Right. So I really, and the other thing is, I think this guy is a stand in for Steve Jobs because there's a lot of tech billionaires now. Do you know any of their names? <laughs> like, but everybody knew Steve Jobs. Like he, he, you know, he did, he did it first. He did it best. And I think it, he really stand and like, if you think a tech billionaire, you think Steve Jobs. You don't. There's nobody today who really replaced him, right? So, um, so Tunnel Quinn, I think, is a proxy for Steve Jobs. So in the show, um, Jeff Goldblum playing uh, playing this character Tunnel Quinn brings in the four char- four main characters, and um, he brings them into you know Silicon Valley, and he's like, "Hey, I want to show you guys something unique, right?" He says, right here on our headquarters, I've built a tunnel to the center of the earth, right? Now, I guess that is somewhat like um, Elon Musk because he, he's really into tunnels. Um, so, <clears throat> so basically, 
at this point, he he gets them all together. He puts them in this in this module, and he says, "We're going to go to the center of the earth right now. We're going seven thousand deep, seven thousand feet deep into the earth. Um, it's going to get really hot. You have to you have to take these uh, pills so that your you know so that your liquidation is is set at the right you know level." And he really frightens them, and they all go down. And there's a point where the elevator is like bucking and sparking, and they're all screaming, right? Excuse me, and they're all screaming, and uh, and finally they they reach the center of the earth, and they look out the windows of the module, and it's just gorgeous, beautiful crystal paradise, right? And they all come together and they hug each other, and they're like, it's so beautiful. And then he he shows that this isn't a tunnel to the end to the beginning to you know the bottom of the earth. What this is is uh, it's a simulator, right? And that he has simulated them going there, right? So all of, all three of them are like, this was, you know, a really amazing experience. We've felt, felt, and he's like, he's like, you know, we used the best graphics. We used, uh, an inertia mod, you know, modulator and, you know, um, there were staff, you know, like this is an orchestrated experience. Right. And so three of the main, three of the main characters are all like, wow, thank you so much, Tunnel Quinn. This is what a wonderful experience. And one of them was like, wait, this wasn't real. We didn't actually go to the center of the earth. Um, and we didn't see this beautiful thing. We just saw this simulation. What was the point of this, right? And that, by the way, that's Dory Seif, uh, one of the one of the four. And she's played by Alia Shawcat. She does a really good job as well. She's really, I don't think the show will even work without her. She's kind of the center of the story. So she says this, and um, Tunnel Quinn says something really fascinating that I think purpose, perfectly encapsulates what Gary built with Dungeons and Dragons. So essentially he built a simulator that is opening in three stages. At first, what what he presented first, I think to just draw people in and give them the easiest on ramp was a combat simulator. The next is a social interaction simulator. That's what we're at the beginning of now. And we're going into high complexity on this. And what my hopes are is that when high complexity is introduced for social interaction, just like we had millions and millions of high, and that's not an exaggeration, those are literally the numbers, millions of people just jam into their head as much information as they could about medieval armor, arm, arms, armor, and arms, right? And warfare, right? And that was helpful as, as a as an exercise in learning in, in learning about something quickly at mass at scale at an accelerated pace right but what we were learning about was probably the most use close to the most useless information we could have right because we're literally transitioning away from that like our world we don't really have war anymore we have skirmishes right uh, that that and on it, the and the biggest thing is like we have these minor skirmishes that the media tells us are the biggest wars ever you know now we're moving into this high complexity social interaction stage and the hope is that people will recognize this and then myopically focus on the structure of social interaction and that we could take the same group well new people but same numbers right or higher and have them learn about human interaction right and then finally after we've done that for about 50 years move into exploration at high mechanical complexity, right? And so basically, <clears throat> Dory Seif says to Tunnel Quinn, what was the point of this? And, and he says, and she says, what was the point of this? We didn't go to the center of the earth. And Tunnel Quinn said this, he said, we didn't, but we may one day. And we are one step closer to actually accomplishing it because we have believed it is possible. All of you, the four of you in this room, are more likely to be connected to... Uh, so that, he says, that's what he said. He said, you know, we we are all one step closer to making this a reality because we now believe it's possible, right? He got them to believe they had gone to the center of the earth, right? All of them, even Dory, right? Right. Um, and but it wasn't real, but they had believed it, right? And so that's that's I think what what Dungeons and Dragons is. It is a map of the possible, right? 
but it's really, really special in that because of its shape, because of it, you know, because it starts with 750 pages of reading, starts, right, right now, if you read Dungeons and Dragons, the fifth edition right now, you have 7,000 pages of reading, and there are absolutely people who have done every single page of it, right, some people multiple times, right, so it is, it is incredible, right, so it's, so Dungeons and Dragons self-selects for this incredibly hyper, um, hyper-selective saying, just the most charismatic, just the most confident, just the most intelligent, right? You need intelligence to read through the 750-page ante that is Dungeons & Dragons today, right? Then you need um, you need charisma to... Fun- and I'm talking people who play the game, not people who just get the books and read them, right? But Dungeons & Dragons, Dungeon Masters, they have to have charisma or their tables won't stick together, right? Because they need to play... This all these people in the world in the world uh, of that they're creating, and if they don't have charisma, people are going to walk away from the table, and they're not going to have a game, right? And they have to have confidence, and the reason why is this world, you know, you're not going to build worlds if you don't have confidence that you are a world builder, right? Like you're saying, uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't just live in these worlds when somebody else builds them for me. I build worlds, right? And once that key is unlo- unlocked in you. You, you enter into a new a new horizon for humanity, right? And so so basically, Dungeons and Dragons is this map of the possible. It allows us to point four players at a goal, right? And we particularly are allowed to do this when Dungeons and Dragons is broad, and we teach everyone that Dungeons and Dragons stories is everything we want to tell with that game, all right? And and we lose this we lose ground on what Gary put forward when we say, "Oh, that's not Dungeons and Dragons to me," right? And we try to keep Dungeons and Dragons small, right? It is a map of the possible. It is a way to get people to believe that something is possible at a very low cost point, right? And that is truly transformative. And that's what I believe about Dungeons and Dragons. It is critically important because nothing in the world is a map of the possible in the way that Dungeons and Dragons is. And nothing allows us to craft super hyper craft these incredible stories for four people. It's a new way to tell stories in a way that is more impacting and more affecting and more important. Right? It's not the mass market storytelling that came before. It's hyper crafted, right? And and it's hyper crafted to catapult people who are already at the top tier of human achievement. Right? It's absolutely critical that we treat Dungeons and Dragons correctly and that we do not allow it to slip back. I believe it's far more than a game and it's 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 really important. I also believe it, like every single thing today, video games and the most useless nonsense will eat this world if we let it. So we have to protect Dungeons and Dragons. We have to push it forward. And so if sometimes I seem a little adamant, it's because, uh, yeah, I, I'm paying attention, right? Harry Potter, one of the biggest achievements in books. It was the biggest achievement in books in easily 100 years there's a strong possibility to be swept away within a, within a decade, right? From, from, you know, and so things don't, things don't stay preserved in this world, right? Uh, if, if we're not actively protecting them and actively pushing them forward. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.